All right, let's take a look at this as we're getting into 11.3, um, finding the area of regular polygons. Before we do that, we have a little groundwork to do, which is we need to know uh, this word right here, apothem, and we need to be able to find some angles looking at this picture. So let's talk about these things, but before we do, let me just show you this hexagonal prism. Do you see it has a hexagon on the bottom and top? Okay. And so eventually we'll be able to find the volume of this because once we know how to find the area of the base or the area of the top, volume is just take that area times the height. So the volume for a prism is the area of the base times the height. And so phase one, of course, is how do we find the area of the base? So let's take a look at what we have here. All right, first of all, let's look at this word apothem. That's very important. I was about to point to my screen. This is the apothem right here from the center of, whoops, sorry, from the center of this polygon to a side. It says it right here. The distance from the center to any side of a regular polygon is called the apothem, and that'll be part of our area formula. So we need to identify that, and eventually you'll be able to find the length of it, because you notice when we drop down the height in an isosceles triangle, which is what this is, it creates a 90 degree angle right there. Do you see it? And therefore that's a right triangle, and so we'll be able to use some trig to find angle measures and to find the length of that apothem okay and I mentioned that and let me mention that one more time that this is an isosceles triangle because if you notice from the center these lines here that create the triangle in the polygon but they are the radius of the circle you see the circle that's circumscribed around the polygon and those are each a radius and the radius will always be the same throughout a circle. Okay, so keep those things in mind, and now let's look at this picture down here. Let's say that I asked you to find the measure of angle, whoops, let's write that again, the measure of angle, A, F, B, and then we're gonna find the measure of angle, A, sorry, F, G. Okay, so looking at this picture, the first one I wanna find is A, F, B, that's right here. You say, well, I don't have enough information, but check it out. If I continue drawing a radius all the way around, what do you notice? The polygon has been turned into five triangles, five isosceles triangles. And check it out. If that um, is the angle we're looking for and I continue drawing it, one, two, three, four, five, Five of those angles all together make up a full circle. So then if I take 360 and I divide by five, what I get is 72, and that will be the measure of each of those angles. Let me erase that and show you that this angle here is 72 degrees. Why? Because it's 360 divided by five. It's a pentagon. It has five sides. 360 divided by five will give you that angle. So this one is 72 degrees. And now, check it out. You have to go back to something you know. If that whole angle is 72, then remember, if I'm dropping the height right here in an isosceles triangle, it's gonna hit at a 90 degree angle. And what also happens is it splits that angle in half. So if that angle is 72, then AFG, let me see if I could put it in green, this one right in here, can you see that guy? That's gonna be 36 degrees, all right? And if I needed to find this angle here, which I guess would be measure of angle GAF, that would be easy to do at this point because now, let me erase a little bit so we can write this all in that we have, let's go with green. This angle here is 36. Of course, this is a 90. Can you find this angle? And that would of course be 90 minus 36. 
which would be 54 degrees. So now check, out, check this out. Just by looking at that picture with what looks like not enough information, we just found all three, sorry, angles. Everything, whoops, that we needed. All right, great job.